Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here. And today we are going to be talking about Martingale systems. Again, uh, I did this video recently on Martingales for Roulette. This is a follow-up video. I'm gonna make this one a quick one. It is on Baccarat. So here we go. Why Martingale betting systems suck, part two. Baccarat, and let's just skip right to the uh, meat of this. We are going to be modeling using an Excel spreadsheet, um, real world Baccarat. We're going to assume banker bets only. I'm going to start by betting $10 on banker. And we're going to use this typical double up strategy. We will double up after a loss. A loss only occurs if the player hand wins. So we will simply leave the same wager out there if the hand ends in a tie. And we're going to, just for simplicity, assume a $1,000 table max. Now you can rewrite my spreadsheet with any minimum bet and table maximum you want. Just be sure you leave a table maximum in there because an infinite martingale is not what this um, video or this spreadsheet is all about. And we're going to assume we have a bankroll of $10,000. That's how much we brought to the casino, um, just so that we can track when we're going to bust out. So let me just go ahead and let's just go straight to that spreadsheet. So here it is. Um, so this should look very familiar. Here is the roulette spreadsheet I had yesterday. So here now is the Bakra. So everything works identical to how the roulette spreadsheet worked. If you want a refresher on all of the details of that one, go ahead and look at that previous video. The only thing that's going to be a little bit different is my computation of the probabilities of these various streaks. Now, again, just to remind you, the way you would get a streak, for example, of five losses, five players followed by a banker, is you have to have five of this one probability happen followed by the other probability. So five player probabilities followed by a banker probability. So what I need is the computation for the player hand to win and the banker hand to win, excluding ties. And I have listed those two numbers right here. The probability of a banker win is going to be this 0.5068 and of a player it's going to be 0.4931. Now, if you're wondering where I get these numbers from, I have this tab, Bakra Combinatorial Analysis, and right down here at the bottom, you can see is where I've done those computations. Now, I'm not going to explain this. This requires some computer programming to come up with these numbers, but these are the official way a mathematician would, would do these computations. So I've thrown these in for you. So um, in the roulette case, what we did is we simply took the losing uh, probability to the power of the number of losses, and then multiply that by the winning probability. So if we look up here in this formula, you notice what I have done is I've taken J4, that is the winning probability highlighted here in light blue, times J5, that is the losing probability, and what is that being raised to? Well, it's being raised to the B9 power, which is simply how many losses in a row I had. So you see this is exactly the same formula um, as we had for roulette um, happening here in Baccarat. So, all right, that is exactly the same spreadsheet after that. We were keeping track of how much we lost before a win. And now for our wins, it's a little bit funny because I have to take away the commission of 5%. So we're not winning $10, we're winning $9.50, right? And if I bet $20 um, and I won that, I'm really only winning $19. If I bet $40, I'm winning uh, $38. So it's a little bit funny how these numbers are not quite enough, right, to completely make up for the loss that we had. And what's interesting is we see here that before we even hit the table limit, if I'm at this situation of having lost five players in a row, so I've, I've lost 10, 20, 40, 80, and 160. So I've lost a total of $310. Then I put out my $320 wager and I win that one. Yeah, but that $320 wager unfortunately had a 5% commission. So I'm only winning 304. So notice before I even hit the table limit, I'm already losing. 
and I'm losing $6 on that streak. So this is a feature of this um, way of betting that a lot of people who think about martingales don't realize. But that 5% commission already defeats the martingale right off the top, right? So that house edge comes into play right off the top there. And we see that at 6.30, we even get more effect of that commission. Of course, when we hit the table limit, that's when our losses really start to pile up. And we saw that in the uh, roulette video as well. Now, what that tells us is that our chance of losing, our probability of losing, if we use a martingale on um, Baccarat is going to start here. And so I would simply add up all of these probabilities going down. And that'll give me my probability of losing on any martingale cycle. And that comes out to be about 2.92% or about one chance in 34. So it's really not that unlikely at all that you will lose in a cycle um, of progression on um, Baccarat. Now, what about busting out? Well, to bust out, we're going to have to burn through our $10,000 bankroll. And we see that if we lose 16 hands in a row, then we have already lost $10,270. And we do not have the money for the next $1,000 wager we need to put up. Remember, we are capped at a $1,000 wager because of the table limit. We don't have that $1,000 left to wager. And so in this case, if I want to know what's the probability of busting out, I simply add up all of these numbers, starting with this cell, all of these probabilities, and we see the probability of a wipeout of losing our entire $10,000 in one um, streak is about one chance in 81,655. So, hey, not very likely, but this is like, um, more likely than getting hit by lightning, right? So um, definitely could happen. And when you talk to people who are lifetime Martingale players, they'll talk about those times that things just went bad and got worse and worse. And that is the true danger of a Martingale. Now, like I did with the um, roulette, the way we compute our average wager is we do the um, sum product of the column of the probabilities with the total wager. So if you simply use the sum product function on these two columns, that tells you your average wager when you're playing um, Baccarat using a Martingale in this situation will be about $81.20. Our average win-loss, um, again, that'll be the dot product or the sum product of these two columns, comes out to be about 95 cents. And when I divide this 95 cents average loss into my average bet, I come up with a house edge based on this computation of about 1.1691 and so on percent. Now, what I want to point out is if we go over to the Baccarat combinatorial analysis and we look at the um, house edge I have, that is 1.1691582. Well, look, that is exactly the same thing. These two are exactly the same number. In other words, if you play a martingale and you do the mathematics to see exactly what your average loss is going to be, your long-term house edge, and you just actually track down every possible thing that can happen, right? All of these cycles of losses followed by a win, and you do this computation rigorously, well, you come up with a house edge that is exactly the same as the theoretical house edge. So this is two ways of coming up with this same number. So one of the points, though, is that we are not flat betting $10, right? Our average bet is $81.20. And because of that, our theoretical loss is going to be far higher in the long run playing a martingale than it would be flat betting the table minimum. So that's all I have to say about this spreadsheet. I hope that gets the point across. Um, I have this tab on the infinite martingale. I'm not going to be covering that in this particular uh, video, but it'll be coming soon. And it is a very interesting topic, talk, talking about an infinite martingale. There is, um, people will always ask, well, can't I beat the house using an infinite martingale? What if I had infinite cash and there's infinite table limits? Couldn't I beat the house? Um, I'll give you a teaser. 
you will be behind infinitely often if you use an infinite martingale. And given any number of dollars you choose, you will be behind that amount or more infinitely often using um, an infinite martingale. Well, of course, the opposite is true also. Given any amount of winnings, you will be ahead of that infinitely often. So, you know, what does it mean to say you'll be ahead and a long-term winner if you'll also be a long-term loser? You can choose to ignore this and only stick with this, and that's your choice. And that's what a lot of these people do when they claim it wins. But don't be deceived. Teaser, I will be covering that pretty soon. So, all right, everyone. Very quick little talk today. I hope that that sets you straight on using a martingale in Baccarat. Don't, don't think it's winning. A martingale in Baccarat, a martingale in roulette, and some people even try martingale in blackjack where they don't split or double down. Martingales lose. A martingale is a losing system. If you want to be a loser, play a martingale. Well, if you use any system at all, and you think that you can read the streaks and you know when it's gonna go from this streak to that streak and you think people are a fool for not seeing the patterns, well, let me tell you something. You are a loser. You're a loser, all right? Got the point? To beat casino games requires information. And I have videos about information throughout my channel. Please check those out. And while you're checking them out, why don't you just take a moment and subscribe I would really appreciate that. You can also get the spreadsheet that I use in this video down below. So, all right, everyone, that's all for today. This is Elliot Jacobson. See you later.